What's going on, you guys? It's your girl, Jazz Anderson. And I am Persuasion. And we just jumped off the porch with... With Dirty Glove Bastard. Yeah. <laughs> they say, Jazz is heartless. Whoa. I was leaving that regardless. Wow. These birds, partridge. <laughs> Why y'all leaving down All right, y'all. So we have two baddies with us on the porch. We got Persuasion and Jazz Anderson. Yes. How are y'all feeling? Good, I'm excited to be here. I know. Okay, we finally got you in, know. so you know, ain't no holding back. Right. At all. Now, okay, I'm sorry to kick it off like this. Mm. Actually, I'm not sorry to kick it off like this. I really want to know y'all's love story for real. Ah. And how y'all even met. I love telling this story, though. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'm going to so, put my best because so, this story is She was wrong. on baddies, as everybody knows. And uh, I, live in, I live in Houston, so mm -hmm. I got the invite to basically go to the red carpet event. I'd never seen the show, but I'm like, whatever, like, I'll go out. I wanted to get out of the house. So I went, I didn't see her at the uh, premiere, the red, with the red carpet, but I, I watched the show. I, I went in the movie theater, because that's where the premiere was for like 10 minutes. I saw her pop up on the screen, and I was like, who's that? So I asked my homeboy, I said, where is she in here? Mm -hmm. Right? So we looking around, I don't know. Cause she had blonde hair, and I didn't recognize her. On the it was that black. blonde hair, wasn't it? I, I, no, she liked the black. I, yeah, I'm like, I'll be honest. <laughs> I like it. So then, anyway, um, I left. I ended up leaving early because my dress had uh, ripped in the back. It was like uh, loose. So I went home to change. I sent her a DM, and I was like, I told my homeboy, I was like, I'm gonna just hit her up and be like, hey, maybe next time, you know, we'll link something very professional. I didn't want to. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want her to like, you know, because I didn't know she was gay or not. So I'm like, let me just be like, hey, didn't get a chance to meet you. Congrats on the show. So when I'm doing that, my homeboy looks, he like, man, they're going to be at this strip club that we always go to mm -hmm. for the after party. So I was like, oh, I just go there and meet her. So I, I sent my DM. And when we literally pull up to the strip club, we walking in at the same time. Crazy, right? She look, she look, we look at each other, she look no, back at me. Cause I she, heard her before yeah, I saw her. her. Like, she started laughing. I was like, who is that? I said, oh, I like that laugh. I don't know what it is. It was loud. And I turned around, I was like, well, damn. <laughs> hey, this is going to be my girlfriend. That's my girlfriend. So you already knew, like. I stamped it before I had it. You she know, was drunk, though. But she did say that the rest of the night, because we was in the same section. And she kept I saying. I stamped it. So that's gonna how, be my girlfriend. So how drunk. long would y'all say y'all were actually like getting to know each other before y'all were like, okay, let's take it to the next level? We were dating we for dated like for a while. We dated for a while. Really? Yeah, yeah. like four or five months. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but well, we dated only each other. And I think people were like, well, y'all was basically in a relationship. And to me, we kinda was because I wasn't getting to know anybody else. And yeah, she wasn't. wasn't getting to know nobody else. So we was really just trying to figure out if we wanted to call each other yeah. girlfriends or not. But it was all up to her. I was ready to go. Now, when you guys officially, you know, launched the relationship in public, uh, what came with that? Man, everybody was like, how did Jazz meet her? Like, because, <laughs> <laughs> nah, because you really look at like my upbringing, her upbringing, me doing reality basketball wives and telling yeah. Roman daughter. And, and me doing basketball, I mean, basketball. baddies. Doing bad, bad, bad girls club, club yeah. and then jet skis and, and, and bad. Make it on jet skis. And just doing crazy <laughs> stuff. You would never think we yeah, would we ever would cross paths. Yeah, crazy. But we have. And then her and my mom had went, it was crazy, right? Yeah. So I didn't know because I didn't watch her season of Bad Girls Club. I guess they had went at it on Twitter. Back when her season was on, she called my mom a grandma, right? <laughs> we, we had to, we yes. had to have a talk about that. When, you didn't throw when my the, girl in the fire. When the like. fans brought it to my attention. <laughs> I, 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 how I, how I, you dated somebody that used that talk bad about your mama? And I'm I like, had no idea. First of all, I did not talk bad. I just, you know, was really nicely rude. So what she was it? Though. So what Damn was it like, like when you and um, your mom Tammy had y'all's reaction after that incident? They had to have a talk. Like when we came, <laughs> when, yeah, we had a talk. Yeah, they had a talk. But it wasn't yeah. like no rah rah type yeah, talk. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. just. I apologize. Yeah, I apologize first. 
But that's something we can laugh at. You know, I was 26. <laughs> I was her yeah, age. Was, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, when you say her funny. age, you make it like, like I'm super young. I mean, yeah. <laughs> me. You're what would y'all here. say is like the best part of y'all's relationship? I want to say like emotionally. Um, I guess I would say we know each other's love languages. And I feel like that's very important in a relationship. And I didn't really understand that when I was younger, but this being my first public relationship and then really like my first, wait, <laughs> what? I'm just waiting for you. I'm like, say. I don't want to say something wrong. <laughs> when, you, when she give me that look, I'm like, what? <laughs> but no, you, if you know your partner's love language, it's going to work. Yeah, she we know, know each my other love, love language. language. Is y'all's love her. language the same or it's opposite? It's, it's different. really the total yeah, When people look at us and they say we are opposites, we really are. Mm -hmm. But I think the the things that we have in common outweigh anything. So it's just like, I can still deal with you, girl, even though I know you get on my nerves. Yeah. Right. Or it's like, okay, you leaving this cup out, but I can still still deal with you. <laughs> Most people, they just be like, all right, girl, it's one thing I cannot deal with, I'm out. Right. I haven't been like that with her and she hasn't been like that with me. And I think that's a good thing. Now, did you guys catch any backlash when it came to y'all publicists? Ah, uh, shit, how do you say? Pub public, public <laughs> relationship. <laughs> yeah. Well, when it came to y'all's relationship being announced in public. Yeah, cause she's, I'm 26, she's 33. Mm -hmm. So that's seven years. Well, at the years. time I was 32, she, she was 26. Right. I yeah, just right. turned 33. You're right, you just turned 33. So, <laughs> yeah, so six, seven years apart. So a lot of people were like, why are you with such an older woman? And why, why is she I, with? Yeah. But people do it every day. Yeah, they do. That's why I don't understand. Is anybody saying anything about Carisha and Diddy? No. Yes. Yeah, Is anybody saying anything about anybody else? No, but for some odd reason, our relationship is so fake. Well, we're not Carisha and Diddy. I don't give a damn. <laughs> Wait, so my people, confidence is on Carisha, please. Okay? What so, are you talking about? So people, so people be, they actually think that y'all's relationship is fake? Yeah. Yes. I do. It's crazy. It's, it's we so, we've been together almost like, a year. It's, I'm like, we're tapping into almost a year yeah. now. Wow. And I'm people still, still have this narrative yeah. that I'm using her or she's using me. And I'm like, well, what the fuck is we using from each other? Because I need to know because we ain't using each other. Y'all are both in the public eye. Yeah, like, that's what I don't really get that. But I mean, yeah, I don't get any surprised how many people still think it's fake. Mm -hmm. Now, Persuasion, um, you've told a little bit of your life story as well. And so just like going through trauma and like healing yourself, mm -hmm. what is it like loving somebody all while you are trying mm -hmm. to heal? That's an amazing question. Oh, that's question. an amazing question. Oh wow, mm, gonna have me get deep there, okay? Um, <laughs> but um, I honestly think she gets my journey because mm -hmm. she's on the same journey. Mm -hmm. And so loving her is not hard. And like I think loving each other is sweet. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> she's never sweet. <laughs> Oh my God, girl. Girl, she's sweet. I keep a tally of it. Like, okay, for April, you've been sweet. But you know twice. what? I love that you said that because I feel like it's just a stigma that, you know, you got to fight through this with your partner. Like, love is not supposed to be perfect. But I feel like when you find your person, they do make it damn Easy. near perfect yeah. for you. That's, that's facts. Yeah. I mean, don't get us wrong. Like, we ain't perfect. Uh -huh. And we see the rough parts of our relationship. People only on social media only see the good parts because we allow them to. Yeah. But of course, when we have our, our spats, I think social media notices, but they don't know how bad it gets. Yeah. Right. Cause it gets pretty ugly with us, but we, I think we've <laughs> grown through that. <laughs> Honestly, I think we've grown through that rough patch in our relationship because at the beginning it was all sprinkles and butterflies. Yeah, and right. then it became, it became yeah. serious yeah. real quick. And the adjustment part was a little rough. But once we got through it and we didn't give up on each other, loving each other and falling in love with each other was just there. It wasn't nothing, it wasn't nothing left but love. So it was like, all right, we're here, I love you. I love you too. 
Now, when you do, when you guys do have like disagreements, do y'all talk everything out or do y'all give one person space and <laughs> allow them to come whenever they're feeling a little bit better to talk about it? We're getting to a point. I used to be like, I want to adjust it right then and there. Yeah. But I'm learning she needs space. She's the type of person that needs her space to digest everything and think it over. So that's what I mean when I say you got to know your partner. So now I'm at the point where we'll take the date sometimes. Mm -hmm. This shit is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And people don't even know this part of us, so that's yeah, so don't. weird. Like, they it's don't. like, oh, we giving them our secrets and stuff. Like, uh, like Lord, so please tell me, this is the prayer, girl. <laughs> this was the prayer, girl. Oh, Sorry. This is the prayer. Now, you guys are about to launch a show. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about it. All right. So, you know, this caught a lot of people off guard, too, because, okay, so I'm 26. I've never had sex with a man in life in my life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people often ask me, well, how do you know that you're gay? Because I came out as a bisexual female, but a lot of people are like, but you've never had any room. I've been with a guy for four years, but we didn't have sex. I still think I could be romantically involved with someone without sex, but I guess in this society, no. But anyway. Yeah, no, baby, not in this world. <laughs> you know, you're not. They so horny. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, dang, like, I still loved him. I cannot even say I loved him, but I never had sex with him. I don't like, think that I, made us, made or break us. But anyway. Him it so. did. That's why he cheated on you. Yeah, him it did. And he cheated. But, uh, okay. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm trying to get him so long ago. <laughs> Shit, that nigga old news. <laughs> now nah, you're right. So anyway. When I came out to my mom, my mom's biggest thing, of course, she cried. Yeah, I'll never don't forget Don't tell it. her business like no, that. No, she spoke about it before anyway. Yeah, don't tell her business. She cried and was just like, I want to, you know, have a grandchild. So for me, got with her, and I I'm like, a kid. she has a kid, right? So I'm, I'm watching them bond, and, and like, she's a great mom. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, I tell her all the time, if you weren't a mom, I wouldn't date you. Cause you just, they're, <laughs> yes, she does. I do like, tell her that, you yeah. know, to me, a kid wasn't a bad thing. It just showed your maturity. It showed mm -hmm. your structure. You can handle certain things. When I see how she is with her daughter, I'm like, you're a nurturer. Okay. So that means you can nurture them. You know what I'm saying? There's just certain mm -hmm. things that I saw in her, but basically let me speed this up. I'm getting to the point now where I'm like, do I want a kid of my own? So I brought to her the idea. How would you feel of a poly relationship? <laughs> but <laughs> for me, and I, it might be a little selfish. I'm it's trying very to get selfish, a, yeah, it's selfish. She want to lay with him, but she don't want me and him not to lay with each right. other. Girl, if you lay with him, I'm laying with him. <laughs> my objective is you already have so a kid. Well, you can't, so you can't me, put your, you cannot tell me I can't have sex with him because I done already had sex with him. I don't before, get why but you I have sex to. with him though. But why, why I, did you want to? Why would you want to? <laughs> Shit. I want a kid. I want a kid and I want to do it naturally. I don't want to do. Girl, we is in 2023. We can go to the doctor. But I now. think I should experience that at 26. I so feel like you, it's not. So you got. Okay, have you already started filming the show? No. no. Now, this is going to be really interesting because. You guys bringing a man, and so, I ain't gonna lie, when I well, read that, I thought you was bringing another girl in. No, no, no. Let me correct that. So, <laughs> you then, drink on that? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like, I don't understand. I, I want to experience that journey with her. Like, why would I just... Just be like, all right, y'all, have fun. Peace out. Call me when it's done. What no, the fuck? look. That's my girl. I you got your girl from Texas. We ain't letting that go. But my damn, thing is, like, at all. I'll, I'll be there her. holding your hand, too, baby. Look at me. Don't look at him. I, <laughs> girl, I want her to have an emotional connection with him. So let me be honest. Men and women are completely different. We're just biologically different. Yeah. So... I'm overly emotional sometimes, and I know that drains you. I'm very sensitive. You look at me wrong right now, I'm going to get in the car with you, and I'm going to be like, why are you looking like that? Yeah, she and, is, uh, and it's so hard. A it's man, so hard. nine times out of ten, I'm going to be hunting with you. They're not even going to pick up on certain shit like that. So right. I feel like you can have balance. You don't need to be sexually involved with him, but he could come to you on a more 
on another level that I may not be able to because I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> it makes so much sense, though. So he's in the relationship bringing you balance. And bringing you dick. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You got it. <laughs> now, what if Mr. Man starts to fall in love with you? Well, I'm a little worried because <laughs> <laughs> he took it something precious from you. I was you gonna have say to that. That's that. what she be saying. She's like, uh, you your have first to like, is your gonna first, be like he, you or him is not gonna wanna not you like. I'm gonna be exed out eventually later you on. You think like, so? Fucking right, I am. You are giving this man something precious. Okay, do you know how hard it was for me to shake away my first? Very hard. Oh wow, this will be your first. Yeah, that's you what see she's what I'm saying. About. She like she don't. He's think not. Oh, first Jess. of all, you are giving him something <laughs> nobody <laughs> has ever had in 26 years, and he's probably 28, 30. You know, he's going to be up in age. It ain't going to be no little boy. It's going to yeah, be a grown ass right. man, of course. But this grown ass man is about to touch the purest <laughs> thing on fucking earth, which is mine. And you think he ain't going to want to let it go? Girl, who the fuck in God's name do you think? Oh, my God. I don't understand. This. I don't think she understands the Yeah, severity. I don't get that, that magnitude. I don't think she understands the severity like... of what's in between her legs. The things that men go crazy over. Girl, you ain't been touched. Good if he boy. find no, if he find out that you, he's gonna find out. <laughs> he's gonna. He's it's gonna be blood right there. <laughs> <laughs> like let's be clear here. You gotta chill. You gotta chill. Mine ain't been touched. Woo! Now, you okay, I'm gonna have to fight this nigga. I'm gonna have to get my no, purse. No, this is what I'm telling you. <laughs> because this nigga is gonna try to run away with her in the sun. But run what away. if you in the? That's what I'm telling you. He with don't Polly give a fuck about the, me. But he can I connect with touched. you on another level. I don't want him you to know what I'm saying? Y'all connection is, is never going to amount to what me and his connection could ever be. So? Fuck no. Tell her, please. Tell her. <laughs> Tell her. I'm just a spectator here. <laughs> Tell but Jazz. It's a man right there. Ask him. Ask him, <laughs> Jazz. Ask him how he would feel <laughs> if you had something pure. <laughs> Not tough. Jazz. Clean. Jazz. Like, please don't Jazz. Ask. Okay. Jazz. No, it's a mission. You getting the baby, keep it peace. Go to that the doctor and do baby. IVL. You getting the baby, keep it peace. That's pee. literally. Then we don't got to. See, I don't think she understand that we don't got to be in poly. Let's put this nigga on paperwork. Hey, sir, we need you for this time and this time. <laughs> get him on a contract. No, she's I, ovulating. Get her while she's fresh. Let's go. You not, Sign this paperwork. You lay down, yourself. lay down. Let's have this baby. <laughs> That's what crazy. you want. That's the end goal. I don't <laughs> want a baby brought into the world like that. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, so you want to be in love and shit. This is not on the. And this, see, I don't think, see, I'm getting down to the nitty gritty. <laughs> this is why me and her, we have these conversations, just me and her alone at night when we get drunk. And so I you mean, said you're open to it. I'm open to it, but I need you to know what you're entering into. It's going to be crazy. So basically, though, we're just looking then for the right guy. Then this nigga going to be a baby daddy, and I'm going to have to really shoot this And nigga. I deal with your baby I'm daddy. I know, I'm just saying. So this nigga you is... can deal with my baby daddy now. Oh, God. That's this... fair. <laughs> it's okay. We gonna, like, it's good. Y'all gonna be good. It's gonna be straight. It's gonna be a journey for shit show. <laughs> now, with this show, what, have y'all came up with a name for it? Yeah, all that's done. We just can't say the network yet. Oh, so this is, yeah, it's, it's coming. Yeah. It's yeah. coming. Mm -hmm. Ooh, shit. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to have plenty of tequila and weed next to me, baby, because this journey <laughs> with gonna her. We're going to be seeing you roll up at every every <laughs> morning. Ah, Where to God. It's going to be so to... beautiful, though. Like, the end result is going to be so beautiful because I think at the same time, she can build a healthy relationship with a man as well that you may not have in your, I'm telling you. I'm glad this man is laughing <laughs> because maybe he's thinking what I'm about to say. <laughs> okay. I'm going to just say this. <laughs> My girlfriend don't play by me, okay, y'all? Me oh, getting no. a connection with this man. I, we got to get... I know what I'm going into. I can't look at you guys and say, I don't want them to build a great friendship. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, have to be I open love the to world that. that she lives in in her head. I really love that for her because it's a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, 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 okay, you know what? 
I, if you say I, you I, get it, you live in a fantasy world. Not too. Girl, I do live in a fantasy world. I'm oh, sorry. What's your like, sign? I'm a Virgo. Oh, okay, okay. I'm a Cancer. So cancer. we're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Jazz, you know, I think you got it. Persuasion, I think she got it. That's awesome. I, <laughs> that was great. I, th I think she got it. I think she good. It's going to be good, y'all. And I'm ready to see the show because I really want to see how my girl act. Like, I want to see how she handle it. <laughs> now, we have to, I do want to get into just y'all's overall careers. Mm -hmm. The journey with being on reality TV, just being in the forefront of all the eyes, what has that been like for y'all? I always say, like, it gave me tough skin, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm so appreciative for it, because I was, first on basketball, I was at 14 years old, so a lot of people don't understand that, like, being thrust into reality TV at such a young age when you're still trying to find yourself getting judged by people from the way I look to the way I talk to things I say, you know what I'm saying? So now at 26, I can say that a lot really doesn't affect me because that journey, I was on it from 14 to 21, 22 years old. So people really saw me grow up. And I'm always just grateful now that I'm like, I'm happy I went through it at the time. I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm, I just wanna be a regular kid sometimes. Like I'm going to school having to answer, why did your mom do this? And why didn't you tell your mom? You know what I'm saying? So. Sometimes I did want normalcy in my life, but now I'm happy with, you know, how everything Oh, wow. So whenever your mom had stuff going on on reality TV, you would come back to the school. For sure. This is my For first sure. perspective getting from somebody like, you know, your mom of the status that she is. This is my first time hearing the perspective of a kid who has to go to school and actually listen yeah. to that. Yeah. Then we had... It was Twitter at the time, it was popping, um, MySpace, you know all that. So mm -hmm. all my peers are on that too. And I got to just kind of, it's like, you don't want to feed into it. But then at the same time, you like, man, I'm a, like, don't disrespect my mom. You know what I'm saying? Right, so I yeah. got fights over things that were happening on, from the show. It was crazy, but it gave me tough skin. Like, now I don't get affected by anything really. Unless I personally know you. Then I'm mm -hmm. like, how you said that? But. Oh, now musically, what was it like for you being in the open eye and just making that transition? Yeah, um, you know, it was crazy because I always tell people and I feel like a lot of people don't understand this, but let me break this down to you. So I feel like I have it harder than a regular female rapper who nobody knows just trying to break out of her hometown. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the times when people heard me instantly, Tammy Roman daughter. So you already have this preconceived, oh, this ain't gonna be hard, that's Tammy daughter. And so really I, she's a lyricist and she really out no, a lot yeah. of them. Yeah, so thank you, I appreciate really that. Period. So like, I, had to, I had to fight through that. And I, I always tell people when I did the BT Cypher in 2019, I'd already been rapping for like four or five years on mm -hmm. a serious level, because I played college ball too. So basketball always came first, but when I did the cypher, that was the first time people were actually like, Jazz Anderson. And I was like, five Thank God. It took me five years for y'all to just know my name. Literally, because at first it was Tammy Daughter, Tammy Daughter, Tammy Daughter. And I did that cypher and I had people in the industry, people not in the industry, like, Jazz Anderson is hard. And some people didn't even know that's Tammy's daughter. It was crazy. They didn't even put two and two together. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy because it was like when they saw me rapping, like when I was on sign, for instance, my image was a mess. So you got <laughs> <laughs> my image not intact. You know, there was so much. So Wait, when I why did this, would you say why did you say your image was a mess? OK, she so when a mess. <laughs> <laughs> baby looked at a mess. <laughs> my baby looked at a mess back then. But you know when she was a kid, so, you know, it's okay. When I was on side, that was my approach. Yeah. Like how she, I'm me. I'm coming mm -hmm. in with this wild hair, put me in the fur, the leather pants, not realizing. Oh, Jazz, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> she said, oh, yeah. Not like that, but I remember, I remember, I remember. Yeah, okay. not understanding. I just what? remember her going home and packing all them furs up. <laughs> I'm young. I'm like 22, right. 23. I'm going into this, like, I, I'm a lyricist. And that's all the game needs. Not understanding, girl, talent is just half the battle. 
That's you got to you gotta make the niggas want to fuck you and the girls want to be you. And the way I came in there, didn't nobody want to do <laughs> none of that. <laughs> so I had to really reevaluate, like, but that's why I'm, I'm happy for that journey, too. Because mm -hmm. I never forget, Ross told me, he said, you a lyricist. You hard as fuck. But you don't listen. She still don't kind of listen, but hey. But I, it took it. somebody like a Rick Ross who gave me my props, Lenny Santiago as well, he gave me my props and was like, you don't listen. So you probably, this is probably the last, you know, because mm. you don't listen. So until you want to take advice, your talent really don't matter, sis. Mm. <laughs> There's a LeBron in every hood. You know what I'm saying? But how many people get those opportunities? And then when you get them, you got to be ready. And I wasn't ready. Were you receptive to that criticism at I first? I loved it. I loved it. Like, because I needed it. Because everybody else was like, you hard, you hard, you hard, you hard. But now I have a Lenny Santiago, who's part of Rock Nation and all that, telling me, I make stars. And you have the talent, but you just don't have the image. Mm. And you don't have the image, not because you can't do it, but just because... You think you know it all. And it wasn't even no selling sex type thing. It was just like, you just got to clean this up. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. Take some, away the fur and the, and the leather. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> sometimes that's... Pick it apart and let's build an artist here. Right. And that's what it was. It was yeah. I was just a dope rapper. I wasn't an artist at mm -hmm. all. But now she's the whole motherfucker. Yeah, bitch. now I can hang with like it's... With the big dogs. Yeah, like you did. I can hang for sure. It's just getting that, you know, nowadays it's like getting that single, that hit single. Mm -hmm. And I ain't found that yet, but it's people know me from my freestyles and all that, so I think I'm doing pretty good. You did your Super Gremlin free. Oh, so let's talk about that. Yeah, so when I did the Super Gremlin, you know what, what holds me back as an artist too is I take like four to six months to drop. Mm. And I'm that's really bad. That yeah, too, but I be having so much other stuff going on. a lot of work on. to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like creative. Yeah, it's it's hard. creatively, yeah. It's Thank not. You. It is. It's not. But you have to think Be about dedicated it. dedicated to your craft. It is, but it's like, so you have people who can like work like on the business aspect, like work, work, work. And then you have people who operate, like you said, like how you she lives in a fantasy, like cre being a creative, like a full-time creative, an actual creative oh, where baby. you get, in, like yeah. she's so inspired by your relationship right now. Like this is her, in, like we're, she's living in romance. Like yeah. this is like, I still need to she's this, to is, this is like, the littlest thing, like going to an art museum, sitting yeah, outside, looking at it. the water, yeah, like true. that gives you inspiration. And to somebody like, and this is where I feel like y'all two like come together really well is because you're really on the business aspect. Like you like, okay, I get you, love this, but we need to get to this. We need to do marketing. We need to do this. Yeah. We need to do I that. Mean, I'll be trying to tell us, like, get on your content. You need to do a freestyle. Yes. I'll be like, hey, baby, the song is hot. <laughs> Everybody's doing freestyles to it. I yeah. think you should do one. She ain't did it yet. No, I. I, I can only do so much. I can't make her. I know, I but can't it's put my finger up creative. her back and be like, ah, crap, baby. Nah, but when I did Super Gremlin, that was the first time. I hit a million on TikTok. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gave me my spark back because I was like depressed at that time. And I right. was like, but I was so depressed that I made a, a, a my Super Gremlin remix is really to somebody. So the, <laughs> the Super Gremlin beat was there, but it was really you in your depression. Exactly. Oh, wow. So when I did that and I saw that, I was like, a million on TikTok? It was everywhere. People was doing it because I had a line in there that was like, when you ask me for the rent, something like, I, I gave it, so tell them I held you up instead of held you back. I said something like that. I don't remember the exact line. People was on TikTok doing that to their baby daddies, their baby mamas. The, 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 the lyric had went viral on there. So when that happened, I was like, dang, yeah, okay. No. But I took another four months off because I'm like, I'm doing other stuff. And I was really in a depression. So I was like, I just gave y'all that real quick. Mm -hmm. Let me go back into my hole. Then I did Mind Your Business uh, freestyle. And I went crazy too. So now I got Ruby, Ruby Red the Sleeves by Nikki. I think it's called. She want me to do that. So I, I did it for her. I to do it. You did? You got yeah. to. Ah, you did it already. You ain't dropping yet. Ain't oh, we need to drop it. Yeah. 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 By the time this drop, it'll probably be out. That's so crazy because I've been, I, I've been on her about it for about a month now. I'm like, mm -hmm. for really yeah. a few months, I've been telling her, baby, you need to at least drop a, one freestyle a month until you find your hit. 
she don't be believing me that I feel like she should do that. I don't want to do a freestyle that much. I don't want to do <laughs> But why not, babe? Keep your keep yeah. your mind going. Keep you motivated. Keep you. But you hit it on right the on the head. We went to a getaway cabin, and when I came back, I was in such like euphoria, and I wrote the freestyle. Yeah. You hit it on the head. Like if your life as an artist, a lot of people don't understand. Some artists can use their depression and make the greatest songs ever. Yeah. Me, I need to balance my mental health and my artistry as well. Like I'm the type, I'll sit in my room. Like I don't really care for the fame. I don't care for fame, all that. It's like, I need to make sure I'm okay. No, I love y'all. Like I feel the, I feel the love. Like I feel like you. I love love. So I'm like, ah, I love y'all. I think, I, thank you for saying that because I think people are like, well, Persuasion is how you just go from being straight all the time to yeah. now you're with a woman. Like, first of all, you're happy. I love love, first of all. To me, love has no gender. I have, I mean, look, my love has a preference. <laughs> 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 yeah. Let me get that straight. My love has a preference. Man or woman <laughs> is my preference. But it's just so happy I feel in love with a woman. Like, I was going through some bad times. Yeah. And <clears throat> I was yeah. single for two years and I was like, you know what? I think I'm just gonna stay single and just keep healing. You know? And here she gone. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> Damn, girl, I was not expecting to be in love again. I fought it for I fought it. I fought it. <laughs> I fought it. <laughs> I fought it. Why are you laughing? Uh. I love, so I, like, I love this so much. I fought it. I love this so much. It's love. Ugh, love. It. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk about love yeah, all day. Yeah, she my, she my, like, I don't like to say my peace because I have peace without her, but she's definitely like my comfort zone. Yes, for sure. And it was crazy because I'm going to tell them this story. What story? I story? went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> I went to jail, right? Don't tell the story right now. <laughs> Don't tell the story. <laughs> Your mama gonna kill me. I was there like six hours. Cause I went at like Ooh. 2 a.m. <laughs> 2 a.m. got out at 10. <laughs> check out, early check out. <laughs> but what really showed me like what solidified her to me mm -hmm. was Right when she, my, hold on, let's clear this up. She went to jail on a technicality, by the way. That's mm -hmm. facts. Yeah, mm -hmm. it wasn't nothing. They did not have to take yeah, her to didn't. jail. Yeah. It but was really on some let's meet our really quota. So that's before people start trying to look that shit up, yeah, that shit nah. is false. Yeah, they yeah. took her to jail on a technicality and Jazz just said, you know what, give it to me. I yeah, don't care. Yeah. She didn't fight it. She didn't try that's to. Facts. Me, personally, <laughs> I would have motherfucking fought it. Because you're not going to have it that bullshit like on my record for no reason. It was just ridiculous. But anyway, it's but anyway, story, babe. she stayed out there all night until they uh, po uh, put my bond up. She paid it and uh, answered my calls when I called. <laughs> they gave me my call. <laughs> Can I get my call, officer? I was calling her. And um, yeah, I was like, right when I came out, when they released me, she was in the car waiting for me. Had the blanket on, like she had slept there all night. And I was like, yeah, this is my one right here. That's what I yeah, I slept outside the jail. Cause ain't nobody doing that. Like, this is too much. Only time me. I, yeah, I mean, love, because only time I love. Uh, that's how I'm saying. She love, went to check on her kid and stuff. I like, want to go check yes. on my kid, yeah. and I also want to go pick up her bun money because yeah. I ain't have it on me. And they told me how much it was. I was like, I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> it was no. It was no like I gotta ask this person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Didn't know she had it like that. Mm -hmm. Boom. And that's mm -hmm. when I was like, Nah, she's solid. Because a lot of. I'm a lot of things, and I have to fix and work on a lot of things, but my loyalty is not one of them. Caption. Yeah, it is. I said it. Don't play with me, bro. Take my back. I really love this love story so much. Like, I love this love story so much. It's crazy, y'all. Yo, it's crazy. It's crazy, y'all. It's so funny because I just started back getting acrylic nails, okay? I had to go on a press-on a press -on run mm -hmm. because I, we kept getting at it. And that she was trying to fight me. I don't fight, though. I feel like I, I can't fight I somebody fight. I lay with. I don't fight. She don't fight, but she'll like, I'm real, like, I'm aggressive. Yeah, I don't talk. Like, I'm really aggressive. Like, 
When you say something to me, I'm like, Lana, drag you by your clothes. And I have long nails, so I can't do that. So they were always breaking, they were breaking my skin. I said, you know what? Until we get out of this rough patch, I'm gonna go on the press run. And I'm officially out of the press run. Yeah, we're good now. We're no good toxicity. Now. No. no. Oh, okay, Persuasion. This is what I do want to ask you, because I did watch an interview, and you spoke on when you were on Baddie South, you didn't know what you were getting into. Right. I didn't. I didn't. Mm -mm. I didn't do my research. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do my research on the people, the production. This is so they didn't run me they a fight. I'm out. I was like, I'm out. Yes. So they didn't tell you. The kid. Hey, they came. <laughs> no. They didn't tell you anything. They set they didn't. you up. <laughs> you told me you was getting a break. <laughs> do you feel like if you would have known? I had a PTSD. <laughs> Do you though. feel like if you would have known everything, including the cast, you probably wouldn't have went on the show? No, I probably still would have went the fuck on. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't scared, Dude. but I would have been more aware of my surroundings, should I say. Mm -hmm. And of course, I don't think people realize it's like four sides of me. It's TV me, it's mama me, it's fun me, and it's bitch don't play with me, me. So. There, I never gave, bitch, don't play with me, me. Cause it's TV time, bitch. Like, it's time to work. It's time to give the people what they want to see. And mm -hmm. in my opinion, it is what they to see. I did not know they wanted yeah. to see fights all the yeah. time. <laughs> I did not know. You was waking up fighting, right going to sleep fighting. Right? <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> you bitches, it got, get the fuck away. <laughs> Get the fuck with me. Put me back at the wrist yeah, carton, please. <laughs> Put me back in my penthouse that's, suite that's at the wrist carton. Did you lose your mind? Like I would have. Bro, loved Atlanta. Them. The first crazy. stop was Atlanta. Obviously, I think everybody knew that. And I, I think I felt so comfortable here. I think I let my hair down too much because I used to live here. So I think while we were here, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get drunk every night. I was fucked up. I don't think people realize I'm a functioning drunk. I can have. Don't a, say that. I am. <laughs> I could have a full-blown conversation with you and you not know I'm drunk. And then the next day you ask me, what do we talk about? I'm going to ask tell you I do not fucking know. <laughs> and that's just that. I really don't know. So that whole day I was a functioning drunk. If you know me, you can look at me and be like, bitch, you was drunk that whole, that whole first few episodes. And I was. But I do not regret a thing at all. I've always wondered behind the scenes, like, this is just a so off topic question, but are the cameras like literally, like from the time y'all wake up, no. they're in your face? That's how it was on um, Bad Girls Club. I like that back in the day. Type that was, of, but I like that. I like that type of production mm -hmm. being filmed 24 seven yeah. to, cause it's real, to right? me, that's reality TV. Having scheduled screen times is not, to me, it's not reality TV, it's put together. Mm -hmm. To record you on a bus drinking, hoping something pop out, that's not reality TV to me. That To me, well, that's it fake, is. it's fake journalism I to mean, me. I mean, no, no, no. Because if I, got a, pump, if I gotta like pump that. you up to give me action, that's a problem for me. When I can just film you all day and get the action, because you're eventually going to give it to me and I can go in the editing yeah, bay and make a reality true. TV show. Mm -hmm. I don't need to schedule fights. I don't need to schedule arguments. But that's what I would say the difference. You, they were scheduling fights. But well, I don't, I don't say they were scheduling there was, fights, there but like real scenes, heated like moments. At this time, there was a lot of stuff genuine, that happened. A lot of stuff that on our end was happening off camera right. and the viewers didn't we know why. Yeah, so so to me it was like, well, this is not reality TV. You're, you're having us put together stories and giving our opinion when people can just see what happened. And it was annoying. Yeah, well, I like being filmed all day, every day. Film me 24-7, baby. I'm going to give you what you're looking for eventually. You still been fighting every day. Well, of course, my <laughs> mouth is crazy. I say shit that people be thinking, mm -hmm. and they don't want to say it. And I stand on what I say and how I feel. If you don't like it, I apologize. Not really, but if it hurts your feelings, well, I'm sorry. Don't do it. What was some <laughs> awkward TV moments for y'all? Well, y'all can name one awkward TV moment. Shit, I had a lot of awkward moments. <laughs> you know what's crazy? 
tired of people she mentioning won't let my. She me watch Baddie, so I've never. I've You've seen... never snuck and watched it? No, because she made it so like, please do not watch me on this. I was single. I was living my best life. I was. I was living my best. I never watched it, so I only saw the. All career. I all I kept talking about was niggas. I don't want my girl to see that now, like and oh, just see that. I'm like, right. where the niggas at? Where the niggas at? Where the niggas at? Where are the You was like that? Yes, girl. <laughs> and it was just because I was single. I was, and plus, you already knew what I was going through already. So, in my mind, I was really being funny and shady yeah. and messy. I was doing a whole bunch of shit off camera, on camera. I was just being TV me. But no, I guess for me, an awkward moment would be probably... When my mom got married and we wasn't invited, me and my sister oh, yeah, weren't invited awkward. to the wedding. <laughs> mm. We were invited to the wedding. I remember that. I remember she got that. married in Vegas. We So uh, she had a VH1 special uh, called get her Tammy back. Ever After. I'm mm-hmm. going to get her back. On VH1. <laughs> I'm going to get you back, mom. <laughs> She gonna watch this and y'all are in trouble. She gonna watch this and y'all are in trouble. We did it for April Fools though. So basically, let me get you right now. So she wouldn't got married. I like my stepdad a lot, so nothing against him. But when it got married in Vegas, and me and my sister weren't invited to the wedding. I had to find out just like everybody else. But anyway, April Fools just passed. I had my Photoshop guy do a um, a wedding certificate. Mm-hmm. Me and I didn't put persuasion. I put her real name because I wanted it to look so legit. I sent it to her, she was shook. My mom was shook. I know she was I had to so text her and crazy. say, I had to text her. Yeah, I said, on. yo, it's a just a joke. Yeah, cause she, was, cause she didn't believe it was She didn't believe joke. it. She was like, no, this is real. Jazz, I know you. <laughs> her, mama <laughs> told her, her mama told her she was going to have to pay child support. <laughs> no, my mom was trying to look, I I said, said, look out for me. I said, what your mama is talking about is not true. I said, girl, she's trying to scare the shit out of you. <laughs> She look out for me anything else, so she like, you went and got married, you're gonna have to do this, this, she this. You gonna pay this, child support because I got this, a kid. This, 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 child support. She was going crazy. Ooh. We was sitting back no, laughing. I was laughing. We was sitting back laughing. But. She was probably ready to swing. No, on. she was. She was. It, it, it definitely couldn't have been. Because when I told her it was a joke, she was mad because all she sent me was a, a she just liked it. She, <laughs> and me and her text. <laughs> me, me and Miss Timmy, we talk, okay? So for her just to yes. like her, she was mad. She was hot. She was not trying to hear. She was a not trying to hear. So I, I just, I was like, for real, y'all wrong. Yeah, but we, that was, but that's but how we was we, Yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah. We I didn't get invited to the no wedding. I didn't. I but never we was really supposed to life. post it on social media. The mm-hmm. joke was supposed to be on everybody. Yeah, but life happened. Yeah, life happened. So what's your awkward moment on TV? What's my? Well, <laughs> pretty much episode one and two of that is pretty much awkward for me. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm such a grown ass woman and I can laugh about the shit because I'm That's awkward. Pretty <laughs> much awkward, you know? It was like a damn moment for me. Oh, yeah. There's many moments you're like, damn. I know you was tired of hearing about that shit. And you know what? It's so funny. I am tired of hearing about it. But when I bring it up, let me bring it up and laugh right, about yeah. it. I don't need you to try to beat me to my yeah. own joke or beat me to trying to embarrass me or make me feel any less than. Because first of all, let's get it straight. Time out. I am not embarrassed. Okay? I was going to say, like. What the fuck am I embarrassed for for fucking talking? Yeah. The fuck? I don't give off this energy to say, fight me if I say something you don't like. I don't give off that. Mm-hmm. I can see if I gave off that, then I should get that. But I don't give that. So I'm not embarrassed for speaking what everybody was thinking. And I have a problem with that. Am I wrong for it? Fuck no. Could I have maybe said it in a nicer way? Probably. But is that me? Fuck no. It's not me. Yeah, you can't help her. Like, react. I can't help. And I can't help nobody That's react. Okay. And I'm yeah. never going to change who I am to help you or to mold you. No, yeah. no I'm <clears> going <throat> to be me. So I don't want to say it's awkward, but people might say it's awkward. But oh. not for me. The shit was a key key. Shit, if it was anybody else, the bitch would have went viral. So I'm just going to kick that in the boot. That's true. That's true. That's why we all watch season one. Yeah. 
Now, Jazz, I want to dive in real quick uh -huh. on your latest project, The Experiment. Gotcha. Creatively, we got to talk about that. Yeah. Where were you during this project? So for me, when I did The Experiment, which is why it's called The Experiment, I was uh, basically me and my team. Shout out my manager, Rudy Alexander. Um, we kind of, and my mom actually as well, we all came up with the idea of like, okay, let's do an experiment. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a lyricist, but it's taking you harder to get into the door. So let's just do a bunch of club records, ass shaking records, fun records, and see how people take it. And it was crazy because my nastiest song on there is called Want Some. And when I did No Jumper with T-Rail, that was his favorite song. And it showed me there, he told me, he was like, this is my favorite joint. Like me and my wife, we listening to this. Like, <laughs> and it showed Why me- you never I, played that for me? It's so explicit. Like it's crazy. Like Why you ain't never, it's nasty nasty? Yeah, like, like you, you was talking about sucking dick and stuff? She going ham. <laughs> what porn you watched? What porn you watched? <laughs> hey man, listen. What porn got you? For the experiment, I had my homeboy in the studio writing with me too. Like we was all. It was. I, I tell everybody, right? As mm -hmm. an artist, you can't be afraid to help to have people come in and help you with the creative process. Of course. Mm -hmm. Now when I do my freestyle and shit like that, that's all me. But there were certain songs that were so nasty. My homeboy came in. You, I'm gonna say you in the car who. Came in mm -hmm. and was writing pen and stuff. I'm like, a cream pie? It was crazy. Like, we were going down. He like, eh, say that. I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my bro, God. we did the experiment. Right. And I feel like as an like artist, that. You know, so that's why on the cover, you got all the, the lab things. Yeah, it's real sexy. Sexy, so I'm in the lab coat with the lingerie, but then I got all these beakers set up with what makes a female rapper sex appeal, raunchy, titties out. Like, it's the most explicit stuff you can see on the beakers. Because we felt like, when I'm covered up, rapping my ass off, y'all like, eh, you hard, but eh. Mm -hmm. So cool, let me give you this, you know? So the record that a lot of people like that was more mainstream was Watch This. So Watch This, I did a video to all that. A lot of people like that. Got, I like that's the one with you. Yeah, like, it got a lot like of radio that. play. Mm -hmm. No, that's Pop It. But it got a lot um, of radio play in Houston, all that. I like so, that one though. Pop It's my Yeah, favorite. Watch This and Pop It were like a lot of people's favorites. But yeah, the experiment. We just did an experiment. So why didn't you like, was it comfortable for you to do that? Well, that's what we ran into. So, you gotta do videos for this shit. Mm -hmm. And I was like. <laughs> How we gonna see a video of that? Cause I'm not being the girl in it. So it was one of those things. I had to perform it. Mm -hmm. Like people was trying to book me to perform. And I had to tell my manager like, I can't because Why I'm you, not you ready for that. You, you know, just so. just hired me to be the sex appeal. I got you baby. Okay, well now I can't, but. Yeah, yeah, basically the experiment. Is, it would have went so much further, mm -hmm. completely. I know it would if I would have done the the rest of the experiment. Let me put it like that. There was videos that were not shot, bookings that I didn't do because I just wasn't comfortable. Because I'm like, I have to sell this shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm talking about sucking dick and and licking it, and it, it, they don't want to see me out there just walk across stage. Mm -mm. So I was like, ah, mm -hmm. I'm good. And we just kind of let it die. But in terms of the, the content, a lot of people liked it. And then at the end of the project, I have a song on there called Deep Soul, which is basically like, so it skits throughout the whole project. We're making a female rapper. Then at the end, I flatline in the project. And uh, I do Deep Soul, which is basically my record saying, if I have to do everything y'all just heard from one through 10, or nine, or however many records it was, to make it, I'm good. Mm. So I flatline. Wow. Yeah, it's That's really hard. deep. Like, it's a That's hard project. Hard. I'm not going to cap. It's super hard. But, you know, it's like, I didn't do, I didn't mark, I didn't do anything because I was like, I'm not comfortable to go out there and twerk and do, like, it's yeah, not she's me. not a twerker. Yeah, it's not me. And the records people love were those records. Of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. But, yeah. Now, before we wrap up, Jazz, what is it that you want people to know about you as an artist? Um, I say more from a female rapper standpoint and artist. Um, I feel like now this whole 
sex sales is kind of going out the window mm -hmm. and real rap is coming back. So I feel like my time is any, any, any moment now. I feel mm -hmm. like I was a little ahead of the curve. And I say that to say when females was, females I know personally, I can text them. They are now billboard charting everything. And I'm like, I saw you switch up to sell sex. I didn't. So, you know, a lot of times it's not about the talent, but it's about everything else that you're willing to do to get to where you need to go. I never did that. And I feel like now it's coming back to real rap. Pretty and can rap. That's me. So All day. They gonna see it eventually. We put it in their face. Mm -hmm. You finna put them numbers up? Don't even worry yeah, about I'm it. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not worried. Cause real rap coming back. I exactly. just waited my time. You did. Now, before we officially wrap up, do you guys have any last words or shout outs? Yeah, I do. Can I just. I say, can, I say, can I say congratulations to myself? Yeah, go ahead, babe. No, no, I was just asking. Yeah. I <laughs> you can. If you're gonna say what you congratulate yourself to. I just booked my first movie role. Yay! Congratulations! She <laughs> did. Proud of you. I'm so excited. So excited. <laughs> so excited. Like, <laughs> like, literally, bitches, the door has opened. Yeah, okay. I'm taking that one door. <laughs> Watch out now. <laughs> and I just uh, did a movie on Lifetime with Remy Ma and uh, my mom, Tammy Roman, called Girl in the Closet. It got 950,000 views. That's viewers the first night. Yep, uh, I know that's premiered. right. And people are still On talking about it right now. Yeah, so you know, that you was just my- just switched over to BET. Facts, and um, before that, I was in a movie called Armstrong, which is on Tubi. So everybody can go see that. We got Armstrong 2 about to come. Um, but yeah, so like, we're working. Work. Yeah, we're working. We have emotion. Working. I'll put it like that. We, we have emotion. You know, we have emotion. There's a couple right here, you know. It's, it's a lot of love. She inspired so. me. I inspire her. And yes. we go do, we do better, you yes, know. we do. I so. love it. Oh, stinky. Girl, stop. They say jazz is heartless. Whoa. I was leaving that regardless. Wow. These birds, partridge. <laughs> Why y'all even got me started? Uh -huh. Baby dry hating.